I have been very reluctant to do topic videos because of how the reaction has been to them recently. But every once in a while, I find something that is... So, sorry about the cat. So, um, informative to me and made such a huge impact that I think that I should make video so that I can share the knowledge because I've been paying attention to this stuff for easy 10 years and I've never heard this before. It was quite an earth shattering, uh, revelation to me. Um, and I talked about this at the end of one of my little, like the very tail end of one of my little walk videos, but, um, I don't think that's going to be seen very much. So, um, I'm also really reluctant to be on camera anymore and that might change again in the future. That's, um, almost to the end of my disclaimers, which is, um, that I don't, I, I expect that people might be offended by what I'm going to say. And, um, you know, n knowledge is power, basically. Um, what I want to talk about is why borderline people are toxic to um, people with avoidant personality disorder. Let me rephrase that. Why untreated borderline people are toxic to, I mean, this is just amazing. Amazing that I've uh, discovered this. It makes everything makes sense. Why the treatment works so well for borderline people and why they're so radically better people. And that's harsh judgment, but seriously, why they're better people when they've had treatment and it's so different from prior to treatment and after treatment. Um, and it has to do with the definition of borderline and where they came up with that name. Now, this is obviously not in DSM. This is very historical. This ha this is, you know, back in the day when they were saying, you know, homosexuality is a mental illness, etc. So this is definitely something to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, and it's using sort of judgmental terms. But where historically they came up with the label borderline is when it was originally diagnosed when they originally came up with this diagnosis they said it was the borderline between psychosis and neurosis which is earth shattering to me um just to give you some definitions here the definition of psychosis is a severe mental disorder in which thoughts and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality and the definition of neurosis is a relatively mild mental illness that is not caused by disease involving symptoms of stress, which include depression, anxiety, obsessive behavior, and hypochondria, but, but it does not include a radical touch with rea a radical loss of touch with reality. So the, neurosis and psychosis are sort of like opposite each other, but it kind of works exactly the same way as love and hate. That if you passionately, passionately love somebody and then something happens and you don't love them anymore, but you still have such intense feelings that you flip over into hating them. And it's intense hate for a little while sometimes uh, until everything calms down. That's, that's another extreme borderline between emotions and the same thing happens when you have borderline personality disorder. This is amazing to me. This explains everything explains how they can have such extreme, um, reactions to everything, um, is that they are right there. So you can't stay on a border. You eventually fall to one side or the other. So when, um, the borderline people, um, have had too much stress instead of coping with the stress, they flip over into psychosis and lose track of reality. And then they really lose their minds. And that's when they really do things that drive people crazy. And I know that sounds really harsh, 
and I know that sounds really awful, but it, it's like a perfect explanation to me. Why? Why do these people, are they completely fine, great, normal people? And then they're just absolutely intolerable. Why are they so toxic to people with avoidant personality disorder? And that is why. Because that when they, when they are pushed by stress to become psychotic their behaviors and how they exhibit them are so extreme that it makes it intolerable for somebody with a void personality disorder. Okay, that's why. And then why is the treatment work? Why does the treatment work? Because the treatment helps them deal with their depression, their anxiety, all these other things. It teaches them good coping techniques instead of maladaptive coping techniques. The maladaptive coping techniques are basically forcing them into psychosis where they are completely out of touch with reality. They learn good coping techniques in DBT or whatever type of therapy they're using and then their stress goes down and then they can stay on the neurotic side which is can be kind of annoying and overwhelming to somebody with a weight personality disorder order, but it's completely tolerable and it's understandable and you can have empathy for them because they're being neurotic instead of psychotic. Now, again, this is not in the DSM anymore. This is, this is sort of, you know, all of um, personality disorders is just a list of traits and it's sort of shorthand for how individual people express their personality and individual coping techniques that they use. Um, but it is kind of a metaphor, sort of, um, a schema <laughs> for how, um, how people act and interact and how to be able to predict how they're going to react in the future based on if they have this personality disorder or not. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the helpful thing. If you are not living it, if you're coping with somebody is to be able to predict their, predict their behavior and, um, understand why they're doing something that seems so wacky and weird. And I'm using a lot of terms that are really negative. Um, and I, I actually don't see that completely as negative. I see it you know, yes, people are weird. And, um, but they're weird for a reason. And that's a pretty good reason. If, if your maladaptive coping technique is to lose touch with reality, go completely overboard and lose your mind. Um, that explains why you are behaving in such a way that is like, unconsciously abusive, which is what untreated borderline people act like. And they don't mean it. And I know it. And I mean, they're still toxic. You got to stay away from them. You really do. You have to stay away from untreated borderline people, borderline people who are thinking that they, you know, they've had the diagnosis and they think, Oh, I'm actually avoidant. And they're reading this or hearing this. <laughs> um, you know, massive hope for you to get control of this. And oh, here comes another one, another cat, I think, or is that a squirrel? Nope, it's another cat. Anyway, um, so again, this is probably sounding really snotty, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm trying to give an explanation that will make sense as to why. So, and again, th that's not something that somebody wants to hear about themselves. But again, if you're borderline, get treatment because the treatment is to stop the anxiety and their depression. And it actually works for borderline people. And that's why it works so well, because you're not flipping into the psychotic side anymore. You're staying in the neurotic side and learning how to cope with it better and better and better. And that will help you find some stability, which will make your life better. It's like amazing. Um, and I think that the terms are 
not completely accurate. Like for instance, when, you know, these like little psychotic moments, I don't even want to call them episodes. Um, that's the coping technique when people basically lose it and cause they do, they lose it. And they're like, you know, that, and, and that's the love hate flip that you get all the time from untreated borderline people is, is that they're super, super gigantically attached and then they hate your guts and then they're back again and then they hate your guts. I mean, this is how they live their life, that flipping back and forth and that is why they're borderline and it sucks and it's unnecessary and I hope they all get treatment because they're all good people when they're not being controlled by their maladaptive coping techniques and their emotions and they deserve better. Um... But avoidant people also deserve better. And, um, you know, you can have empathy and sympathy for somebody and not let them ruin your life. Um, and borderline people, you know, even though 90, 95% of the time they might be the best people on the planet, that 5, 10% when they're flipping into psychosis really, really hammer somebody with avoidant personality disorder. So, um, again, this is not what's in the current DSM. This is the history of where that label came from, um, borderline personality disorder. Um, but it explains so much. So, um, I don't think it's helpful for therapy and that's why it's not in the DSM um, it's you can't really you know unless you're say manic depressive um, then it's really hard to come up with things where the complete opposite of something is happening you know alternatingly um, you know, and it is just little slips. Usually they try to stay to their center when you're borderline, which is, you know, what's going on. And again, it's like, it's amazing and massive sympathy for them. I really do, even though I sound really harsh. Um, I'm sure I do. So, but that's why, that's why they're so incredibly toxic and they need to be avoided when they're untreated once they've gone through treatment i'm telling you i've because i've been in dbt i've seen it i've seen it with my own eyes i've seen the transformation that people can take in three to six months they suddenly have a control of their anxiety and um because of that they don't have to basically lose it So that's, uh, that's the why, um, non-PC to say the least, but, um, I don't know. I'm sure that somebody's not going to like what I'm saying. And I'm sure a lot of people have not heard this because again, I've been looking into personality disorders for a good decade and I've never heard this before. I never actually looked into the initial histories of where people came up with this, um, you know, like narcissistic personality disorder, narcissism came from the Greek story. People know this borderline was sort of like, okay, yeah, some random person stuck this name down. No, that's not where it came from. Um, so it's really interesting sometimes to look at histories of where and when, you know, because again, avoidant personality disorder, I think is a misnomer and it's not helpful to people that are just straight up depressed and they think, Oh, I avoid people. Therefore I am avoidant. Unfortunately, there's multiple definitions of the word. Um, and it really does help to look into the words themselves, what they actually mean, where they came from, because the history of knowing how and why things are called what they are sometimes gives you insight into yourself. 
So I just, I think, I thought that was amazing to, um, to hear that that's where it came from and to see that that's actually, that's how it was initially defined and how it works. And I think that, uh, psychiatrists are aware that that's what's going on because borderline already, I mean, that it's got a stigma when you, unfortunately it has a stigma and it's one of the reasons why people are reluctant to get diagnosed with it why psychiatrists are reluctant to diagnose with it, um, to diagnose it, because of the stigma. Once you get that label, you're sort of stuck with it forever. And that's why, that's why it means it's, you go and have little, you know, psychotic moments. They're not even episodes. They're just, again, the stress gets too high and they lose touch with reality. Wow. Wow okay, I can understand that completely. I kind of wish I could do it from time to time. Um, you know, just take a little break. Um, I can see how that can become a very sort of stuck um, coping mechanism. And I can see why it's they're reluctant to... Um, to accept treatment because it can probably be effective and also I think that explains why so many of them have a diagnosis of borderline and immediately reject it and say well no actually let me look this up I think the doctor's wrong I think I'm something else um, again that is a minor psychotic moment where they're not coping with reality because the stress of coping with reality is too difficult. I still get that. Um, but again, that, that doesn't mean that avoiding people who are dealing with their own things and are already so impeded by their own um, personality disorder need to cope with that. And it is toxic to them. It's just across the board. It's toxic dealing with that sort of inability to, um, you know, predict what's going to happen. Because if you can't, you know, that's what avoidant people do. They try to predict. And, the, and if they can predict negative, they will. And so, you know, if you're thinking that somebody's going to do you wrong, they're going to, they're going to see that they're doing you wrong. And that's all there is to it. So, yeah, um, it's better to, you know, keep yourself safe and avoid that until they've gotten treatment. Because once they've gotten treatment, then they can keep it to the one side. They're not going to flip over and then their behavior becomes more predictable. And even if it's a negative behavior, it can be, you know, you can see how it's positive. You can see the change. So, yes, that is why. There is an actual, it's not just sort of a... a because there's like this creepy feeling when you're dealing with, with um, borderlines, and that's why they are on the edge, and they're they can lose it at any moment, and you sort of pick up on that. And so, I think I'm repeating myself. I'm always repeating myself. Um, you know, that's legit. That that's not just, you know. But the thing is, is I think borderline people know that too. And they know they're always on the edge of, of just losing touch. And that it also explains why they have no sense of self. Because if, if most of the time you're totally in touch with reality and every once in a while you flip out and um, you lose touch, and you come just a little psychotic moment starting to rain, I guess this means I should go inside. Um... That explains why they can't, they don't really know who they are because every once in a while, everything they know changes. And again, so much sympathy for that. Um, and I hope they all get treatment because then they can hang out with avoidant people and it's safe and it's not hurting anybody. And, and that's always a good thing.